Today we're going to try tuning the diesel heater with uh, carbon monoxide by using the, this is the cheapest carbon monoxide test you can get. You'll notice that when you move it, sometimes it'll give you a reading. That's, that's great. So when you're doing this, don't move it because you'll get false readings. And this is just the other really expensive uh, carbon monoxide meter I've got, just to see how the accuracy compares of each. Although they'll just be sitting on the bench near the exhaust. I'm not gonna try and jam them in there for fear of melting them. All right, let me bring you in for a closer look. What we've got on the bench today, the cheapest carbon monoxide alarm, the expensive carbon monoxide alarm, the multimeter with the K-type thermal probe that I've jammed into the heater housing, the air fuel ratio gauge, which will probably become very redundant from what I've heard, and the controller, and I bought a brand new controller. But having done that, I've since found out that someone says the settings are stored in the heater unit itself, and this is, well, it doesn't make any difference whether it's because it's stored in the heater. And someone also said that unplugging uh, the heater makes it forget everything, which uh, appears to also be the case. Now, if I was designing this heater setup and selling several versions, you think you would make the controllers different. Like, like, they're obviously, they're branding them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 kilowatts. So why not just make all the heater bodies the same, which they are, and then just program these differently with, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4 kilowatt of power settings. And then, and then people can go in and change them if they want. But, hey, that's what I would do, but that's not what happens. Eh, you just get your heater out of the box and it's up to you to fiddle with it. Right, uh, I did want to mention the other thing, the, the reason that we're doing this. So Canadian Andrew, I'm going to call him Canadian Andrew. I'm assuming you're, you're Canadian because you mentioned uh, Canadian dollars. If you're not Canadian Andrew, I'm sorry, but you're now being referred to as Canadian Andrew. When they said they were tuned here, they're obviously using them for long-term heating, which so they don't want them to suit up, they want them to get to last as long as possible. Now it's up to you what you tune your heater for. So if you want it to last a really long time, turn everything down, make sure there's no carbon monoxide, so it's running suitless, turn the fan speed down so the motor's not working as hard. That's fine, That's it's up to you. You, you might not give a fuck. You might want as much fucking power out of this goddamn thing as possible. Turn the motor up to 5,000, blast as much, eh, well, not as much. There'll be a point where adding more fuel doesn't equal adding more heat, but generally, the more fuel you can pump into this thing, the more heat you will get out of it until it overheats. But we'll hopefully not get up to that level. Hopefully we shouldn't be able to get up to that level either. But that may be everything. You might be fine with taking this here and throwing it away after a year and having used, got the most heat out of it. Let's say like you only use it one month a year. You just want it to blast heat. Turn it all up, turn everything way up. Let it blast itself to bits. And then if you're happy doing that, that's fine. It is totally up to you. I would just recommend spending the 20 quid, 20 dollars, look at that it's fucking reading because I moved it. Uh, sorry, um, spending the 20 dollars and buying one of these and then you can tune it yourself with your own setup and you'll get the best results from your heater. You just, for fuck's sake, look at this thing. Right, I'm going to sit it back down. You'll get the best results from your heater if you give it a bit of a tune. So without further ado, because I've waffled for fucking long enough, let's put the fuse back into the heater, hopefully with no sparks, you never know though. Right, heater, fuse, going in now. Oh, no sparks, that's good. Right, leave that sitting there. The controller has lit up. Can, can you see the, oh, my wires are attached to many things. Gum wires. There we go, right. So, this has just been plugged in from fresh, so has the What's it doing? Two, oh, well, two and a half is low, so that's reset, because I had mine set at 0 0.8. And let's try and go up. Let's try and go up to max. This may take some time. Oh, that was another thing somebody, uh, people said, you can absolutely adjust this on the fly. Wow, that makes life so much easier. We'll be able to just turn it up. Four. four. It's, the maximum is four. Wow. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let's run it as is and see what the readings are and then we'll take it back up to what I had and we'll see what we get from that. So four, let's 
turn that on. That's on. Let us turn the meter on so we can see the temperature. Temperature says 15 degrees. I'm not entirely sure I believe that, but... Maybe it's my meter. Maybe it doesn't read low. I don't know. Perhaps it's an odd... This is a new thermocouple, the, one that, the other one I melted. Oh, yeah, far gauge, let's turn that on as well. Just for shits and giggles. Is it on? Yes, it's on, right. So we have got, can't see this one. Let me just set it there, there, there. Right, we see them, gauge is on, that's on. That, heating up. We'll let it fill up and then come up to maximum temperature. I'll bring you back once it's up and running. Right, the fuel pump has started pumping. It's not lit as yet, but it's just getting there. Give it a, give a chance. Uh, carbon monoxide readings are still zero, meaning it's still not lit. Oh, I can hear it now. It's good. If anybody's wondering what these two pipes are doing, they're just letting the blast, the heat blast kind of move out of the way. Oh, there we go. There's the... Woo! I'm glad... I'm glad. This one's only staying on for a little while because it beeps like fuck. Yeah, like that. Don't worry, I'm I'm gonna turn it off in a minute, but No, the numbers aren't a million miles away. Anyway, let's let's just turn this one off. Please. Oh god, be quiet. Oh, thank God for that. Right, it's going to be back to being quiet. Right, um, it's starting. You can see we've got 500 uh, parts per million there of carbon monoxide. Now it should drop off. Uh, it's up and running. We've only got one uh, green bar on the thing, so we're not quite hot yet. Again, I'll let this run up to full speed. I'll bring you back. Okay, that's been eight minutes. We're up to full temperature on the bars, and that's at, we're running four hertz on the fuel pump. The carbon monoxide flutters between 10 and 20. It's, I don't know if that's the here doing it or the meters inaccuracy, but, so between 10 and 20 parts per million. The uh, housing temperature, it started to trail off now. It got up quite quickly to like 130, and then slowly crept its way up to 145, so we'll, Say it's up there in that region. The air fuel ratio is reading uh, 27, 28. Okay, I I'm gonna come back to this, the air fuel rating, I'll come back to I'm this right now. So people have misunderstood, oh, I don't know if they misunderstood, but air fuel ratio is, it's, it's a chemistry thing. It's got, it's independent of heaters, engines, in, any of those things, it is the parts of fuel required, no, the parts of air required to burn one part of fuel perfectly to turn all of the air fuel mix into energy and other, you know, resulting components burning the hydrocarbons to make, you know, carbon dioxide, etc, etc. But it doesn't matter if it's in a diesel here or an engine, if you could get the perfect air fuel ratio, you would convert all of the fuel into energy. So saying that, oh, a diesel engine's got, a, it's a much higher or a much lower. It's, it's not, it, yes, it is in the real world, it's doing the things, but it's not converting all of that fuel into energy. Hence, black smoke. But in our setup, or in the diesel heater's case, it's not able to atomize the fuel efficiently enough that the actual gauge sensors can read it properly. So, although this says 28, it's probably not 28 because the carbon monoxide shows that it's burning quite well. So we'll probably just turn this off and then put that in the drift brew and use it to do cool drifty things. Anyway, I digress, right. So this is the standard setup, which was, I well, we've made it up to 150 slowly. So this is four hertz. So let's take up to what I had mine at. Oh, uh, now we have to put in these sudden numbers again. Uh, on six. Eight. Eight. 
Okay, we'll, we'll leave the low one just now. But let's take the high up. So let's make it seven again. Six. Seven. And we'll leave it 2,000 RPM. And 5,000 RPM. So the stock was 5,000. Okay, so uh, now it'll run up to what, it? seven here. So it's getting up to seven. Let's let it. Oh, yes, there goes the carbon monoxide. Woohoo! We also notice there goes the temperature. So more fuel is more heat. And we're now over a thousand parts per million. But look at the heat, that's... So, like I said before, more heat is more fuel... No, <laughs> sorry. More fuel is more heat. So if you want this to go the hottest, well, I can actually see black smoke. Seven might be too much. Look at their fuel ratio. That's, that's come way, way down. It's like 15. That's like half of what it was for. Well, it should be because we added just like twice as much fuel. The temperature's still climbing the housing. Wow, that's that's some hot air we're getting out there, ladies and gentlemen. But at the expense of suiting everything up because we're thundering out more carbon monoxide and soot particles than it can read. So, okay, let's take it down a notch. Let's go back in and take it down a Doing half, right, let's take it down now. Oh, we're on four. Well, let's take it down to six. Let's see what six does. Right, back down to six. Oh, the temperature got oh, way over 200. Smashing. So that's a tremendous amount of heat. But, like I say, this, like, you're obviously getting more soot particles and sooting things up, etc, etc. So we'll set this to 6, but I'll now take a little bit to run down the fuel pump still. Your fuel ratio is already levelled out, so it must have got down to 6. 6 hertz. Okay, 6 hertz. Didn't bring the temperature down really, it kind of levelled off. Still, it's climbing slowly, so even at 6 hertz, and we're still making so much carbon monoxide that it can't detect the level. Let's take it down a little bit more. One. Somebody else said you should reprogram this to be to change the pin, so you just have to do it faster, but we'll just, sorry, the mirror's about to turn off, that's all right. So where's five and five and a half? Five and a half? Five and a half. Okay, five and a half. I'll just switch his bike forward to that and that. Sorry, the mirror was gonna turn itself off, it's been so long. So we're five and a half hertz. The temperature's starting to drop now. I say drop. It's leveling up. Uh, uh, is it? Uh, 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 we need to leave for a minute. Air fuel ratio is now at 19, 20. Still more carbon monoxide than the meter will read. Has it got a max? Got to hold. Max is off the chart, minimum's off the chart at the moment. Either that or we baked it, that's always an option. I've actually killed the carbon monoxide alarm. I could test it by bringing the other one back in. No, no, so the temperature is coming down again slowly. Or they're going up. Right, make your mind up. Okay, there's so much carbon monoxide in here that my meter won't actually zero out. That's, that's handy. Okay. Right, let's take it back down to five then. 
and I'll bring you back once this is hopefully come down to five hertz. Okay, the heater, uh, no, the gauge finally sorted itself out. Well, it is now showing 200 parts per million. Did we? I can't actually remember the start of this video if I started with five hertz. No, I did. We started with five. That's weird. It has now gone worse. It's very strange. Uh, I have no explanation for this, except that I've got the sentence wrong, but I don't think I have. Five? No, was that five? Was it not? Yes. Yes, it was. I am now thinking outside. No. Okay, finally, the carbon monoxide's appearing to come back down. The temperature of the housing's coming down again. The airflow ratio has gone back up again, as expected. I'm going to turn all this off before we all get gassed to death in here. Let us turn this off. Come on. Off. Off. This should... Does it spike now or does it drop off suddenly? I can't remember. Drop off suddenly? That'll drop. That'll drop. I've got the extractor fan on. That doesn't care anymore. Turn it off. Put that in drift brew. Unplug that. Smashing. Oh yeah, we do get a spike at the end. Interesting. And uh, obviously the housing temperature drops off because the fan's blowing cold air over it just now. Okay, that was fairly interesting. Right, uh, I can turn this off now. Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn this off, save my old batteries. The purpose of this video wasn't to give you settings to put in your heater. As Canadian Andrew quite rightly pointed out, your heater might be different from my heater. Your heater might be set up in a completely different way. Your exhaust might be tied in knots. It might be more free-flowing free, free free than my exhaust. So there's, there are no settings to give you, you know, apart from the ones that come out of the box with the heater. And they seem to be working fine. It's about you, you yourself, and your purpose-free heater. If you want longevity, turn the maximum fan speed down. Just turn it out, because obviously the slower it's spinning, the longer it'll last. And if you don't want to take it apart to clean it, turn the fuel settings down so there's absolutely no carbon monoxide. Find the point where there is carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide, and then take it down a couple of hertz until there's no carbon monoxide, then you won't have, or you'll have very little soot particles entering the system, so you shouldn't have to clean it. But the downside of that is you will get less heat output from here. If you want maximum heat output, turn it up as fast and as hard as everything will go until you see black smoke, and then turn it down a little bit. But bear in mind, you will have to strip it down annually or every six months, to give it all a good clean and put it all back together to be fair. But if you're if you're happy doing that, fine. If, or hell, if you've got so much money that you can just do that, run as hard as you can every year and throw the heater away and install another one. By all means, go, you go, you do that. That's if that's your thing. I, as I say, each to their own. So and there are no settings that will work for every heater, but I do recommend buying one of these. This isn't sponsored in any way, this is the cheapest one I could find on eBay, which is, was it £20 or £22 or something? Buy this, point it near the exhaust and don't move it, because if you've seen it, if you move it, it gives you false readings. Point at the exhaust, see where carbon monoxide readings are, and then it's up to you how you want to tune it. For longevity or for maximum heat and power. So that kind of wraps up this. Oh, I was going to do the 2 kilowatt, but... A, there's no point because my settings won't match your settings. And B, I also just remembered that I cut the end of it off so that we could put the glass window on it to see. Oh, guess what that noise is? Yeah, that's the carbon monoxide alarm for the workshop. Ah, well, that's as good a time as any to stop filming then. Well, shut up. Thanks for watching, guys.